salutations, fans of great games. It is I, Ashton, and I have returned to beguile you with tales of the most wonderful titles from years past. What delights have we in store for you today? Only some of the absolute finest digital interactive entertainment of the year 2011 had to offer. Yes, we are indeed back yet again to tell you all about the most wonderful games from a particular 12 month period. And for today's list, we're looking at 2011. As is always the case before we get started, we must remind you of the rules. A game qualifies for one of these best of X years lists if it was released in the year in question in at least one territory and received a minimum of seven professional reviews. We don't include ports, re-releases or collections in our rankings as you'll find those in the list relating to the original year of release. I hope you've got all of that because honestly I'm getting sick of repeating it. I'm Ashton from Triple Jump and here are the 10 best games of 2011. Number 10, Gears of War 3. Xbox 360, 91.49%. We're kicking off this list with the first of several sequels to be among the best of 2011. And this one comes to us courtesy of the good folks over at Epic Games and Microsoft Studios. The second sequel to the venerable Gears of War takes place two years after the destruction of Jacinto, humanity's last stronghold, and sees protagonist Marcus Phoenix and his comrades fighting to save what's left of the human race from the threats of the Locust and Lambent. Like those that came before it, Gears of War 3 is a third-person shooter that places heavy emphasis on cover and squad tactics. Basically, if you've any hopes of surviving the game's many battles, you're going to have to be smart, as the gun's blazing approach is unlikely to pay off. Gears of War 3 received widespread acclaim from critics, who were impressed by its story, which was written by science fiction author Karen Travis, as well as its voice acting and soundtrack. There were some complaints about the lack of innovation on display in the title. However, the devs were probably fans of the phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and simply opted to give the people more of what they loved about the first two games. Number 9, Pushmo, 3DS, 91.5%. Our next entry is something of a hidden gem, or at least we can't say that we here at Team Triple Jump have ever heard of it, so it's certainly a hidden gem to us. In Pushmo, a downloadable puzzler for the 3DS, players are tasked with pushing blocks around in order to create climbable platforms so that they can reach children who've been trapped atop giant structures. In addition to the 250 plus levels that are included with the game, players can create their own and share them with their friends via QR code meaning that even if you do manage to finish the game, there's still plenty of stuff to do. Critics were mightily impressed by Pushmo, with some even going as far as to call it the 3DS eShop's killer app. The originality of the gameplay, ingeniousness of the puzzles, and charming aesthetics of the game were all called out as highlights, and many agreed that Pushmo was, at the time, one of the finest offerings on the 3DS. If, like us, you're unfamiliar with this particular puzzler, it's definitely worth seeking it out, though that might be easier said than done now the 3DS shop has closed. Number 8, Rayman Origins, Wii, 92%. Before Rayman Origins came along in 2011, it had been a whopping eight years since fans of the limbless platforming hero had gotten an entry into the mainline franchise. So by that point, any Rayman would have been good Rayman. They didn't just get any old Rayman though, they got an absolute stonker of a game. Rayman Origins sees our floaty-footed hero setting out on the mission to save the Glade of Dreams after it's invaded by the Dark Toons. To do this, he must rescue the elect toons that inhabit the world by traveling traveling all across the glade and visiting various different lands. Gameplay wise, players can expect a side-scrolling platformer that evokes the original Rayman game, with drop-in, drop-out multiplayer that means up to four players can get in on the action at any time. Upon its release in November 2011, Rayman Origins was met with widespread critical acclaim. The simplicity of the gameplay combined well with the varied level design to give players an experience that was described by one outlet as being the best 2D platformer not called Mario. High praise indeed. Number 7, Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception, PlayStation 3, 92%. More sequel fun now, as we turn our attention to everyone's favourite wisecracking adventurer that isn't Indiana Jones. That's right, we're about to enter Uncharted territory. Jesus Christ, that one was bad. In Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception, players step into the well-travelled shoes of series protagonist Nathan Drake, as he and his pal Victor Sully Sullivan attempt to find the lost city of Iram of the Pillars, all whilst fending off mercenaries led by Sully's former employer, Catherine Marlowe. As Drake, players must platform their way through a variety of locations, defeating enemies as they go with hand-to-hand -hand combat, contextual melee attacks, and a whole smorgasbord of firearms. 
The game also features some stealth elements, as well as puzzles for players to solve, with the help of Drake's journal if they need it. Critics could find little fault with Uncharted 3, and lavished praise upon its graphics, cinematic presentation, writing, and voice performances. The game went on to sell over 6.6 .6 million copies worldwide, and won a boatload of awards, including Interactive Achievement Award for Outstanding Achievements in Visual Engineering, Animation, and Art Direction, and a Spike Video Game Award for Best PS3 Game of 2011. Number 6, Little Big Planet 2, PlayStation 3, 92.04%. Do you enjoy platforming, like the idea of being able to build your own levels, and wish you could do it whilst listening to the dulcet tones of national treasure Stephen Fry? Then, oh boy, or girl or other, are you in for a treat with this next entry? Little Big Planet 2, the follow up to 2008's Little Big Planet, sees protagonist Sackboy facing off against the Negativitron, an interdimensional vacuum cleaner that threatens to destroy Craft World. However, the main draw of Little Big Planet 2 isn't the story, but is instead the creative aspect of the game. Unlike its predecessor, players aren't restricted to making only platforming levels in Little Big Planet 2, they can instead create many different sorts, including racing, puzzle, and role playing levels. Little Big Planet 2 enjoyed a warm reception from critics, who thought that it was a huge improvement over its predecessor. The creative tools were simple to understand, but still left tons of space for players to go hog wild with their imaginations, and the game looked absolutely stunning. Several outlets also applauded the backwards compatibility, which meant that players could enjoy community-created levels from the first game, as well as the eclectic music that accompanied play. Suffice it to say that this wasn't a game that anyone was willing to sack off. Number 5, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, Wii, 93.15%. Go on, admit it. The first thing you thought of when we said The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword was that awkward E3 presentation, where Shigeru Miyamoto couldn't get it to work properly. Thankfully, most of the kinks were ironed out before release, and Skyward Sword wound up becoming one of the best games of the year 2011. This Wii exclusive sees players stepping into the shoes of Link as he explores the floating island of Skyloft and the land below it in order to rescue Zelda. Like most other Legend of Zelda titles, the gameplay sees a player exploring the world, fighting monsters, and navigating dungeons filled with puzzles, enemies, and bosses. But unlike other Zelda games, Skyward Sword uses motion controls, so that players can really feel like they're part of the action. Naturally, the motion controls weren't perfect, and did catch some flack from critics. However, they weren't enough to ruin the experience, and most agreed that the game looked beautiful, played well, and told a wonderful story. It went on to win heaps of accolades from various publications, and sold well over 3.5 million copies worldwide, making it a commercial success as well as a critical one. Number 4. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D 3DS 94% We heard that you like The Legend of Zelda, so here's some more! Oddly enough, this is not only the second Zelda on this list, but it's also the second appearance of Ocarina of Time in one of these Best of X Year videos, with it previously taking the number one spot on 1998's list. We're not breaking any of our rules though, as Ocarina of Time 3D is a remaster rather than a re-release or a port. Released for the Nintendo 3DS in June 2011, Ocarina of Time 3D brought all of the delights of the N64 title to a new generation, complete with fresh, shiny graphics, stereoscopic 3D effects, and mirrored versions of the rearranged dungeons from Ocarina of Time Master Quest. Like the original, the story sees series protagonist Link travelling back and forth through time using the eponymous Ocarina in order to stop Ganondorf from getting his slimy mitts on the Triforce. Ocarina of Time 3D was lauded for all the same things as the original, including its core gameplay and story, and also received praise for its updated graphics, controls, and added 3D effects. It didn't attain as high of an average review score as its predecessor, but being not quite as good as the best game ever made still makes you pretty darned excellent. Number 3, Portal 2, PC. 95.16% When it was originally released in 2007 as part of the Orange Box, very few people expected Portal to become the cultural phenomenon it is today. It wound up surprising everyone though, and folks simply couldn't get enough of Chell, GLaDOS and the Aperture Science handheld Portal device, so naturally a sequel soon followed. Like its predecessor, Portal 2 is a title of the puzzle persuasion and players must solve a series of test chambers by strategically placing interconnected portals. These may be used to undertake such simple tasks as 
getting from one side of the chamber to another, or complex ones like directing projectiles to hit a target. Most critics felt Portal 2 was a worthy successor to Portal, with many even going as far as to say it was better than the original game. Compliments were paid to the gameplay, puzzles and multiplayer mode, as well as the game's humour and the voice performances of Ellen McLean and Stephen Merchant, who played GLaDOS and Wheatley respectively. Put simply, if you're in the market for a taxing puzzle that will tickle your funny bone and can be played with a pal, then you really can't do better than Portal 2. Number 2, The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, Xbox 360, 96%. Considering that it seems to get a re-release roughly every half an hour, it can be easy to forget that The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim is well over a decade old. There's a reason that Todd Howard and co keep wheeling out a new version every time the champagne fund at Bethesda runs dry. Mommy, please. And that reason is that Skyrim is really, really good. We doubt there are many out there that are unfamiliar with Skyrim, but for the three of you that haven't played the game, the premise is thus. Players take on the role of a prisoner set for execution who, following an attack by the dragon Alduin, discovers that they are the Dragonborn, and they must venture across the titular land of Skyrim and put an end to the big scaly boy once and for all. Upon its original 2011 release, Skyrim received universal critical acclaim, with both reviewers and players praising its art style, the variety of locales, gameplay changes such as the ability to dual wield and the removal of the character class system, and the quality of the main questline. There were a number of technical issues present at launch, however, several patches have since been released, and although the game still isn't perfect, it comes pretty darn close. And number 1, Batman Arkham City, PlayStation 3, 96%. When it was released in 2009, many people thought the Batman Arkham Asylum was the best thing since sliced bread. And you know what? They weren't wrong. When a sequel was announced, people were left to wonder how exactly developer Rocksteady could top Asylum, or indeed, even come close to repeating its success. The answer? Give people more of what they liked, less of what they didn't, and throw in an open world so those cape physics can properly get to work. Batman Arkham City follows the titular of Bat in Black as he attempts to get to the bottom of Protocol 10, a plan concocted by Arkham City Warden Hugo Strange, all while struggling to cure the blood disease that Joker infects him with. <laughs> and you thought you were having a bad day. Arkham City carries over the head-scratching puzzles, fluid, satisfying combat, and existing gizmos and gadgets from the first game, whilst introducing an open world, tons of side missions, and more satisfying boss fights. Critics were blown away by the game, and agreed that Arkham City was better in practically every way than its predecessor, which was no mean feat. So, well done to you, Batman Arkham City. You're both the hero the list deserves, and the one it needs right now.